वेलकम बैक we were when horn antennas we have finished the basics of horn antennas today we'll be doing a rectangular horn antennas uh, followed by yagi wood array and parabolic reflector so let us recap what exactly is a horn antenna it can be regarded as a open out wave guide or a flared out wave guide and its job is to produce a uniform face front uh, with a aperture that is larger than that of the wave guide why do you require a larger aperture so that we get a greater directivity so these were the types of uh, uh, antennas uh, horn antennas that we have studied uh, these are the examples of rectangular horn antennas and these are the examples of circular horn antennas so rectangular horn antennas we have many types exponentially tapered then sectoral h and e and also pyramidal so this section we'll be talking about rectangular horn antennas so a little bit more recap uh, when we are considering the mathematics so this is the horn antenna one side view it is being fed by a rectangular wave guide and from the wave guide it flare out and it gives the aperture a and this is a plane of a horn mouth and the distance l is between the throat and the aperture and the theta is a flare angle the l is a, a path length and you also have delta here and delta is the path length difference this is l plus delta the total uh, uh, distance it's also known as the radial distance and this l is the horn length and a is the aperture and theta is a flare angle depending whether the flaring is in e plane it is theta e and flaring in h it is uh, theta h similarly aperture it's in measured in meters a, the aperture is a e in e plane and a h for h plane we also were talking about the directivity the maximum directivity occurs at the largest flare angle for which uh, delta does not exceed a certain value delta not so this delta sh uh, should be negligible and uh, what is the delta for which you have maximum uh, uh, directivity and that will decide the home dimensions the optimum delta is l divided by uh, cos theta by 2 minus l and uh, where theta is uh, a flare angle l is the horn length so this is your optimum delta uh, be, the, at this point you have the maximum directivity and delta should not exceed this uh, delta not and in the meantime we can also have the optimum length so generally you would like to have a large uh, length so that you have a, a higher uh, aperture but the practically you would like to have a shorter horns so in between we have what is known as the optimum length the optimum length l is given by delta not cos theta by 2 divided by 1 minus cos theta by 2 these two derivations we have done in last class then coming to rectangular horns so the rectangular horns there are basically three types sectoral h plane wherein uh, this will uh, Uh, this is your e plane in the y direction, and the flare is in, is in the h plane, sectoral e plane. According to this, uh, the flaring is the flaring of the horn is in the e plane. In pyramidal horns, the flaring is in both the planes. Uh, the horn will flare up, or it will expand both in the e plane as well as in the h plane. So the horn expands in e plane and h plane. So this is a side view. so this is a rectangular wave guide which is being fed so this is the e plane assuming that's in the y direction the arrow indicates uh, the e field uh, electric field and then h is a magnetic field and when it's flaring here this is aperture a e in the e field a h in the h field this is your horn mouth now there are some basic uh, things so uh, we are talking about one lambda the one lambda is a wavelength 
and if the aperture in both planes of a rectangular horn exceeds one lambda. So, which are the both planes uh, in H plane and L E plane? If the aperture exceeds one lambda, then the pattern in one plane is independent of the aperture in the other plane. So, the aperture determines the pattern. So, you can see this pattern, it is like this. And the pattern comes down to zero on either side. You can see the length of the arrows are a little less. And here they're all the same. In one case, so this is an example, what does it mean? For example, if you consider an asectoral H plane and a pyramidal plane, and uh, in both the cases, if uh, the H plane pattern, this is your H plane pattern, and it is the same as a H plane pattern of a pyramidal horn with the same H plane cross section. So you're taking two different uh, rectangular horn antennas. One is sectoral H plane and pyramidal. In uh, sectoral H plane, the flaring is in the H plane. In pyramidal, the flaring is in both the planes. But in both the uh, uh, horn antennas, if uh, the aperture is same, and if the aperture is same, and if it exceeds one lambda, so this is your aperture. Can you see this is your aperture? AH. So this is your aperture AH in the H plane. So if the aperture is quite big and if it exceeds one lambda, then the patterns are uh, independent. So uh, what does it mean? Uh, when I consider the pyramidal uh, horn and the H plane pattern of the pyramidal horn and the H plane pattern of a sectoral H plane, so both are same. The patterns are same. Similarly, if I consider a pyramidal horn and a sectoral E plane, this is your sectoral E plane, the flaring is in the E plane. In pyramidal, it is both in the E and H plane, doesn't matter. But now, if I consider the pattern in the E plane, sectoral E plane, and the pattern of a pyramidal horn, E plane pattern of a pyramidal horn, it will be the same. So, now referring to this figure, you can see that uh, the total flying angle is theta e in the theta e plane, theta h in the h plane. The axial length is L from the uh, throat of the horn uh, to the aperture. So this is your throat of the horn and the aperture. The total length is L and you have a radial L length R. So what is R? R is L plus delta. And delta is a part length difference. And you were uh, having an expert uh, figure wherein uh, Rhodes is a scientist. He has measured the patterns. So these are the set of patterns in A and B in this figure. The figure is divided into two parts, A and B. They give the measured E plane and H plane field patterns as a function of flare angle and horn length. So on the top portion, that is your A1, you can see that uh, theta e is kept constant. For this row, uh, theta e is uh, uh, kept constant. And for the bottom one, so you can see that theta e is constant. And for the bottom one, theta h is constant. Both of them are 20 degrees. So the flare angles are kept constant. And when the flare angles are kept constant, we can see that uh, the top is the e-plane patterns. So these E-plane patterns have minor lobes. Can you see this? These are the minor lobes. Whereas this H-plane patterns, H-plane patterns, they do not have any minor lobes. Remember, when you have a minor lobe, there is a loss and the directivity reduces. So for the same theta E, you can see that in the E-plane patterns, uh, for increasing radial distance R, so this is radial distance 1 lambda, 2 lambda, 4 lambda, and so on. For the same radial distance, when you consider the E plane and H plane, E plane has the side lobes, whereas H plane does not have any side lobe. So the directivity in E plane is little lesser compared to the directivity in the uh, H plane. Then coming to the other set of patterns, 
And so this other set of patterns here, we kept the radial distance as eight lambda constant and the aperture angle, the flare angle is really increased from five degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees and so on. As you keep on increasing the flare angle, as you keep on increasing the flare angle, once again, you can see that in the E plane, in the E plane, you, the side lobes are uh, getting bigger and bigger. You're having side lobes and here the plane is completely split into two parts for theta E equal to 50 degrees. Whereas for theta H equal to 50 degrees, the H plane doesn't have anything. And here the directivity is increasing. You can see that uh, the HPW uh, in, uh, decreases or the directivity. Here you have certain uh, half power uh, uh, bandwidth. And here when you go here, it becomes sharper for theta H. So the same thing is uh, specified here. So in the upper row, E plane patterns are given. So this is your upper row. In the upper row, uh, the E plane patterns are given as a function of the E plane flare angle theta E. And in the lower plane, it is H plane flare angle theta H. So this is a H plane patterns. The bottom row is a H plane patterns. And you can see that for the angle theta E equal to 50 degrees, this is the angle theta E equal to 50 degrees the E plane pattern is split. Whereas for theta H equal to 50 degrees, the H plane pattern is not split. Rather, it is quite uh, sharp. Okay, this is because uh, at the end of the aperture, you have a, a phase shift of 180 degrees that has a more effect on the pattern. Whereas in H plane, it doesn't have, it reduces to, in H plane horn, the field goes to zero at the edge of the aperture. So the phase near the edge is not so important. So the value of delta naught, delta naught is a path plane difference for H plane can be larger than that of the E plane. So you have a figure, once again, from the road, uh, road's experimental patterns. Uh, you can use it to, from the experimental patterns, you can select optimum dimensions for both the E and H plane flare as a function of the flare angle and horn length L. And this is being indicated by the solid lines. And corresponding half hour beam bits and apertures in the wavelengths are also indicated. So we have here, this is for the H plane. This, and this is for the E plane. So this solid uh, diagram is for the E plane. And this solid line is for the H plane. And uh, this is delta naught for, so this is your H plane. This is your H plane. And this is a delta naught for H plane. So the delta naught for H plane is 0.4 lambda. And the dashed line uh, gives you the delta naught for 0.4 lambda. Uh, this is a theoretical line that you have got the dashed line and the solid line is the experimental one. You can see that for the H plane, a delta naught equal to 0.4 lambda uh, is satisfied. Similarly, for the E plane, this is for the E plane. This is your solid line for the uh, E plane. And uh, this gives you the flare angle, uh, theta E or theta H versus the horn length L lambda. As you can see that the, when the horn length uh, L lambda uh, increases, uh, the theta decreases. The flare angle decreases. The flare angle decreases. As uh, L lambda increases, as the horn length uh, increases, that is already seen for a given aperture. So this is for the given aperture. This is your theta. And... Uh, for the same constant aperture, as theta increases, what happens as L increases, what will happen to theta? Theta decreases. So apparent for this E plane, you can see that delta naught is lambda by four. Lambda by four is nothing but oh, 0.25 lambda. Now, so this is satisfying. The dotted line, dashed line, the theoretical one, 
satisfies delta not equal to 0.25 lambda satisfies for the E plane. Satisfies for the E plane. For the H plane, you have delta not equal to 4.4. Similarly, you have the apertures. So inside it, you have this six, seven, and all. These are the apertures. And uh, similarly, for AH, uh, the aperture in the H plane, for AH, the aperture in H plane, you have nine, eight, uh, seven, etc. And we also have the half power uh, uh, beam widths. So these are the half power beam widths. The beam widths are in degrees, half power beam widths. Uh, that is 11 degrees and 10 degrees. Uh, this is in the H plane. This is for the H plane. And similarly, for the E plane, the half power uh, uh, beam widths are given by 9 degrees, uh, 10 degrees, 11 degrees, etc. So let us uh, look at the features of this uh, figure. This figure is uh, a horn length L versus a flare angle. The flare angle uh, theta E is for the E plane, uh, theta H is for the H plane. And then you have two solid curves, the experimental results. This is for the E plane and this is for the H plane. So apart from uh, the solid curves, you also have plotted for uh, the delta naught. So the delta naught, uh, which is uh, uh, gives you a relation between the L and theta. Okay, and look at this figure. Look at this uh, expression. We had a delta naught as L versus theta, L divided by cos theta by two minus L. So you can plot this L uh, as a function delta naught. So when you do this, you see that uh, the delta naught, uh, the delta naught for 0.4 lambda satisfies for the H plane. Delta naught for four lamb, point 0.4 lambda is satisfying for H plane. The dotted line and the solid curve are same for H plane. And for us, the E plane, delta naught equal to 0.25 lambda. 0.25 lambda satisfies this. Apart from uh, delta naught and the E plane and H plane, uh, we also have the half power beam widths in degrees, 17 degrees, 16 degrees, etc. Then the aperture in meters, that is AEH in terms of lambda, A H lambda, it's in terms of uh, wavelengths and also A E H, A E lambda for E plane, A H lambda for the H plane. So as you've seen, the dash curves show the calculated dimensions. So for a path length of delta naught is 0.25 lambda and 0.4 lambda. So 0.25 lambda gives a curve closer to the experimental for curve for E plane flare and 0.4 lambda, the curve is close to that of the H plane flare or a considerable range of horn lengths. And what does it mean? The tolerance in the path angle. So for H plane, it is 0.4 lambda. That is better than that of the E plane. The E plane is around 0.25 lambda. Once again, coming, taking the same figure, let us uh, say that we have to construct an optimum horn antenna with L equal to 10 lambda. So with the 10 equal to 10 lambda, uh, what do we get? So go back to this figure and uh, draw for 10 equal to L equal to 10 lambda. So this is a horn length for L equal to 10 lambda. So try a straight line like this, L equal to 10 lambda. And then you can see the uh, uh, values. So this 11 degrees. 11 degrees is uh, uh, HP half power beam width uh, uh, in the E plane and uh, 13 degrees. So this 13 degrees is the same HP W in uh, H plane. But then we have the aperture AH lambda so AH lambda is around six or slightly less than six, uh, slightly less than six. And then AE aperture, so AE here. So this AE will be, this is your AE, this is your AE. And this AE is between four and five. 
So this is your four and this is your five. So it's between four and five. You can say this is something like 4.5. Uh, this is a h. So and uh, so from this for L equal to 10 lambda, for L equal to 10 lambda, when you draw a straight line, uh, you can see that uh, uh, the half hour beam width is 11 degrees in the E plane and 13 degrees in the H plane. And apart from this, the apertures, A H, uh, the H plane aperture is uh, uh, something like uh, around uh, six uh, lambda and uh, A, uh, the aperture in the E plane is around 4.5 lambda. Then we can also look at the corresponding uh, uh, theta e and theta h. So your this is your uh, theta e. So the theta is e is around 25 degrees, and this is your theta h. Uh, this is uh, around 38 degrees. So you can use this. And uh, uh, when we go back to the uh, figure, I mean. Uh, the explanation, uh, we can see that once again, uh, this is what we are talking about. Uh, H plane is 11 degrees, HP BW is 11 degrees, and HP uh, BW, that is half our uh, beam width, is 13 degrees. This is 11 and 13 we have got. And E plane aperture is 4.5 lambda. So this is AE is uh, 4 point lambda, and H plane aperture AH. AH is around less than six, it is around 5.80 lambda. And then uh, from this, what do we see that E plane aperture, AE is 4.5, is smaller than that the H plane aperture. H plane aperture is bigger, that is six, whereas E plane aperture is 4.5. Uh, though the aperture is not so large, the beam width is also less. For uh, E plane, it is 11 degrees. For H plane, it is 13 degrees. So the beam width is also less. This is because as we have seen, in the E plane, the minor lobes are larger. And uh, this is also about the delta that we get. And then we're talking about the directivity. Let us screen, this is, uh, we have the directivity. So the directivity is expressed in terms of its effective aperture. So as we have seen in previous examples, we had the aperture. AE is 4.5 lambda and AH is 5.80. This is one particular example for L equal to 10 lambda. So this from this aperture, we can find the directivity. The directivity is 4 pi into effective ap aperture by the lambda square. And that is the wavelength at which it is operated. The horn antenna is operated. So by this effective ap aperture, effective aperture is related to physical aperture. How is the effective aperture related to physical aperture? Uh, by uh, the aperture efficiency. The aperture efficiency sigma is equal to AE by AP. So substitute this. So AE equal to uh, aperture efficiency sigma AP into AP. Now what is AP here? AP is your physical aperture. This is your aperture efficiency, four pi by lambda square. Generally, how do you define the directivity of gain? Directivity of gain is defined as four pi into aperture divided by lambda square. So this is your effective aperture. And how is this related to the physical aperture that is given by sigma, that is efficiency into the actual physical aperture. So for a rectangular horn, uh, the total physical aperture is equal to AE and AH. So we have seen that uh, 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 the E plane and H plane, uh, you have to look at this. So this is your AE and AH. So total aperture, what is the total aperture? AE multiplied by AH. This is the area. For a rectangular home, that is length into width or uh, AE into AH. When you multiply AE into AH, uh, you get the total physical aperture for a rectangular horn. And for a uh, conical horn, uh, the physical aperture is equal to pi r square. As you know that uh, uh, the area is uh, pi r square. So you get uh, uh, pi r square for 
a conical horn. And for a rectangular horn, let's length into it, that is AE into AH. So we are assuming that all of them, whether AE, AH, or R, uh, the aperture radius for a, a circular horn, it is all uh, at least one lambda. And then taking the aperture efficiency as around 0.6. So this equation, 4 pi AE by lambda square, and uh, uh, aperture efficiency uh, AE is replaced by aperture efficiency into physical uh, AP, that is a physical aperture, and assuming that the aperture efficiency is 0.6. 4 pi into 0.6 is 7.53. So you can assume d equal to 7.5 into AP by lambda square. And in dBi, the directivity is given by 10 log into d. d is 7.5 AP by lambda square. And for a pyramidal uh, rectangular horn, this equation becomes uh, 10 log into 7.5. And remember, uh, AE is in terms of lambda. AH also is in terms of lambda. So 3 lambda, 4 lambda divided by lambda square, for example. The lambda lambda gets cancelled. So this is AE lambda into AH lambda. So these are the apertures in terms of lambda. If the apertures are given in terms of meters, you again have to divide by lambda square. If the apertures are given as lambda by 3, lambda by 4, etc., the lambdas in the denominator gets cancelled. This is all the example in the cross textbook. So here we are constructing a, a pyramidal horn. And for this pyramidal horn, we are finding the length L. And what is given? Uh, uh, it is given by delta equal to 0 0.2 lambda in the E plane and delta is 0.375 lambda in the H plane. The delta in the E plane is 0.2 and the delta in H is 0.375 lambda. Apart from this, you also have an aperture AE equal to 10 lambda. Out of the two apertures, one of them is given. That is AE is 10 lambda. So we, since AE is the E plane aperture, we have to find H plane aperture. So AE is the E plane aperture is given. We have to find a H plane aperture. Uh, delta is given. And so you have to find the length L. And the flare angles also we are supposed to find theta e and theta h we have to find. So, and we also have to find what are the beam widths and the directivity. So let us use these, uh, recap some of these uh, uh, example uh, equations. So you have cos theta two, cos theta by two. And this is your cos theta two by opposite, uh, that is uh, adjacent, angle, adjacent side is L and this hypotenuse is L plus delta. And then similarly, if I say sine theta by 2, this theta is a whole one. If I take this uh, uh, right angle triangle, so if you take this uh, right angle triangle, so this becomes theta by 2. Cos the sine theta by 2 is uh, um, opposite side. Opposite side is A by 2. This portion is uh, A by 2 divided by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is L plus delta. Similarly, tan uh, theta. Next, we are uh, talking about uh, uh, these uh, L is equal to A square by A delta. Then also from the geometry, we have L is equal to A square by A, A delta, when delta is lesser, lesser than L and theta also. Now, using these uh, values, uh, we have delta equal to lambda phi. Lambda by phi, this is given. Okay, what is given? Uh, delta equal to 0 0.2 uh, lambda in the E plane. And it is 0.375 delta in the H plane. And we also have AE equal to 10 lambda. So three things we have. Uh, uh, delta in the E plane. Uh, delta in the H plane. Delta in the H plane. And AE in the... Uh, AE equal to 10 lambda in the E plane. AE in the... 10 lambda. So here we have uh, AE that is given. So AE is given and uh, delta E is you have to calculate. Uh, whereas uh, uh, we have delta this portion and this uh, L we have to calculate. Theta we have to calculate. 
delta uh, e and delta h are given. Delta e and delta h are given, and a is also given. A e is given. So here we are given. Once again, uh, we'll come back here. So a e is ten lambda, and delta in the e plane is point two lambda. Now, what is the required horn length? L is equal to a square by a delta. So previously, you can see L equal to a square by a delta. A is given, delta is given. So you can find the length L. So length L is a by eight lambda. So L is equal to a square by a delta. E is 10 lambda. 10 lambda square is 100 lambda square. 8 by uh, delta. Delta is 0 0.2 lambda. Out of lambda square, 1 lambda gets cancelled. So we get 8 by 5. The whole thing becomes 62.5 lambda. This is the length L. Then we have theta E. So we can calculate theta E. Now we have the length L. We have E. We also have delta, so we can calculate theta e. So theta e is, uh, we have a lot of expressions for uh, theta e, okay. Theta can be uh, computed from cos theta or sine theta or tan theta. We have L, we also have delta, or we have A, and we also have L, and we also have delta. Or we can use this tan theta. Any one of these three equations you can use. We have a e and 2l, so we can get tan theta e. So what is uh, tan theta e? And tan theta e is this. So theta e is equal to 2 times tan inverse a by 2l rearrange. So theta e, we get it as 9.1 degrees. Now we have to go to the h plane. For the h plane, a h is not given, but l we have already solved. So and what is given? Delta e equal to 0.375 or 3 lambda by 8. So delta is given as uh, 0.375. So this is in the H plane. Delta is 0.375 lambda. So that's already given. And we already have calculated uh, uh, L. So we can calculate theta H. So for calculating theta H, we can use L is there. Delta is given. So we can calculate theta H. So here to use this equation, AH is not given. A H is not given. Only delta H is given. L we already have calculated. L remains the same. Uh, so L remains the same. So you can use this cos theta expression. You cannot use a sine theta or tan theta expression. We need A H for sine theta and tan theta. So I use this first expression cos theta by 2 for uh, as delta H is given and L is given. So you substitute uh, theta h is equal to 2 cos inverse L by L plus delta. L is 62.5 lambda and delta is also 0.375 and 62.5 take out lambda common. So you get theta h. So once theta h is given, uh, you can rearrange and get a h, the aperture in the uh, h plane. The aperture in the h plane is 2L into, you can use to get a, and we know theta, we know L and delta. We can use the sine or tan expression. Suppose you use the tan expression, A equal to tan theta by 2 and 2L, you have to rearrange. So this is what AH is equal to 2L uh, tan uh, uh, theta H by 2. So we get it as 13.7 lambda. You can also use the other expression, which is L equal to A square by A delta. So A delta and L lambda, and A is square root of that. So even if you use that expression, also you get 13.69 lambda, which is the same as 13.7 lambda. So you can solve this using any one of these expressions. So you can get uh, uh, AH, aperture in the H plane, uh, theta H, uh, the flare angle in the H plane, theta E, uh, the flare angle in the E plane, L is the required horn length. L is the required horn length. The second portion of the question is, what are the beam widths? So for this, we have to go to the table. Uh, and in the table, we have seen uh, for uh, 
the half power beam widths in the e plane is given by these is a, there are two beam widths the beam widths in the e plane the beam widths in the h plane the beam widths are given by this expressions okay and this is for uh, 56 by now this is half power beam width uh, so 56 by ae lambda and the other is 67 by ah lambda in the h plane it is 1667 by ah and here it is 56 by ae lambda so we have got uh, ae as 10 ae as 10 lambda and ah as 13.7 lambda so this is ah we have okay. AE is given as 10 lambda. AH we have computed as 13.7 lambda. Substitute AH as 13.7, AE as 10, and the expressions are taken from this table 56 by AE, and this is 67 by AH. So we get the half power beam widths as 5.6 degrees and 4.9 degrees. Then next is what is the directivity? The directivity is 10 log 7.5 AP by lambda square, assuming that, uh, we are assuming that it is 60% efficiency, assuming that it is 60% efficiency. So 7.5 and AE is 10 lambda, AH we have computed as 13.7. So substitute all this, we get 30.1 dBi. So the lambda, the, this is just a summary of this problem. The lambda delta values are conservative. You can go up to 0.25, they are taken 0.2. You can go up to 0.4 in the H plane, they are taken 0.375. So for an optimum home, you can have a larger delta values. And uh, if you have go for a larger delta values, you will have a shorter horn. Uh, but what about the gain? The gain will slightly reduce. So this is a trade-off. And this trade-off is shown in a figure. This is a gain versus the length of the horn. So the gain versus the length L or A or AH, the length L in lambda or the aperture uh, in E plane, the aperture in the H plane. This, these are plotted. And uh, what exactly you can uh, figure out from this? So this is your uh, L, this is your L line. So this is your L line. That is length L versus a gain dBi. And according to this, we can uh, see that uh, or the, for a given length, uh, it gives an aperture. Of, if you want for a particular length, you can also get the appropriate aperture and gain. So you can see that the larger horns, that is when you increase the length of the horn, the gain also increases. That is already known. If you have a bigger horn, if the length L is increased, if the length L increases, the gain also increases. And once again, if you increase the L or uh, you, uh, you keep the L constant and increase the apertures in A or a H plane by increasing the flare angles. So these are the flare angles. So if you can increase the flare angles theta E or theta H, for the same length L, AE and AH also will increase. Even in that case, the gain also increases. The gain also increases. So for example, if you want a 19 dBi, so you can find out what are the, uh, what is the length L. So the length L and what is the theta E, and that is aperture AH and AE. AE is around uh, 3 lambda, AH is around 3.8 lambda, and what about the length? Length is around four lambda. So you can find out from this graph uh, the desired dimensions, the desired dimensions. So this is the same figure, which is expanded view. Uh, so this is the dimensions of the rectangular horn versus the directivity. Uh, so the dimensions of the rectangular horn is the length L, the aperture in the E plane A, the aperture in the H plane AH versus the directivity, the directivity of gain. So you can note the dashed lines. So according to the dashed line, a gain of 19 dBi. If you have to get a gain of 19 dBi, the horn length, so you can see that, uh, so for 19 dBi, the horn length, this is this, this is from the uh, L line, the horn length is uh, 4.25 lambda, then, uh, 
or continuing further, or we have the H-plane aperture. So this is your uh, H-plane aperture. So for same 19 that is AH. So AH interacts with this 19.5. This is equal to how much? Uh, 3.7. This is 3.7. And AE. AE is also uh, 2.9. So this is 19 d by A. This is AE curve. So you get 2.99. So these are the inside dimensions. We are assuming that uh, the delta of the E-plane is 0.25 lambda. And in the H-plane, it is 0.4 lambda. So that uh, the dimensions are close to the optimum. So for the, you have seen that for uh, 0.25 delta, uh, 25 lambda, uh, delta equal to 0.25 lambda, the dashed line is almost equal to the experimental E-plane output. Similarly, for H-plane, and delta equal to 0.4 lambda gives you these figures. So we also have assumed that uh, the efficiency is uh, 0.6, efficiency of aperture that is equal to effective aperture divided by the physical aperture. So we have finished uh, uh, the horn antennas and uh, regular horn antennas. Uh, so we will, uh, we have uh, uh, the remaining uh, two portions, that is Yangi Uda array and uh, parabolic reflectors. So we'll continue with this, uh, which are in the section 8.8 .8 and 9.5. And so we'll have the two types, so two more types of arrays, uh, antenna, one is Yagi Uda array, and then the parabolic reflector. So these Yagi Uda array, so we can see these figures, uh, these have been regularly used uh, at the top of your houses. These are old uh, TV antennas. And uh, uh, these are all uh, uh, the antennas uh, which are used for communication purpose for receiving. So you would have seen this lot of antenna. This is Yagi Uda antenna. And this is used for very high gain applications. Uh, and you can also have a, a controllable radial app. Uh, so these are the array elements. Uh, the array elements uh, can be of two types. They can be uh, driven elements. That means you're feeding uh, power through a transmission line or coaxial cables. So the array elements in an antenna array, there are two types of uh, elements. One is the driven element and the other is a parasitic element. In a driven element, you have a power supply through a transmission line. So it can be loop antenna, dipole antenna, horn antenna, etc. These are all the driven elements. In parasitic uh, uh, elements, the currents are, you do not have a transmission line or a coaxial cable. Rather, the currents are induced by a nearby driven element feed. So you have this uh, uh, parasitic element and then you have a driven uh, element like this. This is an antenna. This antenna will be uh, radiating power. So this will be radiating power. So you have a field of this. This field uh, will induce a current. It will induce a current in this driven element. So these are known as parasitic elements. So these parametric elements do not have a transmission line uh, connection. For example, you have, can have a helical antenna, which is driven by a loop antenna. And how do you tune this parasitic element? So you can use a, a lump reactance, either a, a capacitor or an inductor in series with the antenna. So using this, you can control the wavelength or tuning of the parasitic element. So if uh, you, it is inductive, then it acts as a reflector. And if it is capacitive, the parasitic element acts as a director. So the uh, antenna array can have three types of elements. One is a driven element, wherein the driven element is uh, uh, connected to a transmission line or coaxial line, which supplies power. Then in the array can also have two types of parasitic elements, which are the two types of parasitic elements, one a reflector and a director. When is it a reflector? It acts as a reflector when the parasitic element is inductive and it acts as a director when the parasitic element is uh, uh, capacitive. 
So this is your uh, reflector. So this is a three element uh, array. This is a driven element. It is being uh, supplied by a coaxial cable or transmission line. The power is supplied and uh, the field of this driven element will induce current in the two neighboring parasitic elements. This is parasitical element. This is known as director, which is capacitive. And this is a reflector, which is inductive. And the maximum radiation is in this uh, direction. So the first uh, Yagi Uda array was measured by Uda and he constructed uh, Shintaro Uda. He constructed this experimental antenna. He constructed with one reflector and seven directors on the roof of his laboratory in Tohoku University of Japan. So here, the horizontal wooden bow, you can see this. So this is the OPPO wire, wire line. This is your coupler. This is a driven element. The rest are all cross pieces with the insulators. And you can see that. So this is an open wire line and this is a support on the wooden beam. This is a roof and the wall. So you can see that all these are uh, the parasitic elements. And uh, he measured patterns and gain with a single parasitic reflector. Uh, so the reflector was only one, uh, a single parasitic reflector, a single uh, a parasitic uh, director. This was one uh, combination of the antenna. Another combination of the antenna was one reflector and as many as 30 directors. So uh, he also had uh, uh, the he found out that the highest gain was for a reflector of lambda by two in then uh, spaced about lambda by four from the driven element. And the best lengths were about uh, lambda by two with optimum spacing of lambda by three. So all this he has observed it uh, experimentally and later um, uh, theoretical models were developed using uh, computer uh, techniques. So here, they also have found out the advantages of close spacing of the reflector to driven element spacing. So the reflectors were uh, kept near the driven element. So coupling is more, uh, current induction is more, and you have better gain. Later, uh, one more professor, Yanki, he, he was uh, 10 years old as senior, but uh, he presented uh, all the papers uh, he presented all the papers uh, in many of the uh, platforms. And uh, uh, he also suggested to for, for short wave power transmission. So the, he suggested the idea that uh, uh, this uh, uh, antenna uh, with uh, one drivel element and uh, many parasitic uh, elements, that is your reflector and directors, they can be used for beaming solar power to the Earth from a space station or from Earth to a satellite. So you can use it to concentrate and do this. And this is being done now. The solar power from uh, the space station uh, to a satellite, you can use this. So this was the modern version of six element uh, Yagi Uda array. Uda was the one who developed it, but Yagi was the one who made it famous by a lot of presenting papers. Uh, presented a paper with Uda at the Imperial Academy, then uh, in the third Panifis Pan Pacific uh, Congress in Tokyo, and all. So they both together presented the papers. And this is a modern version. And since both of them, though it, Uda was uh, there, it was known as Yagi Antenna. But in respect to Uda, it is known as Yagi Uda Antenna. Uh, you can see that it has one reflector. This is your driven element. These are uh, reflectors and these are all directors. On one side, you have all the directors. Here are one, two, three, four directors. And you have a reflector here. This is your driven element and this is the spacing. Lambda by four for the reflector and 0.31 lambda for uh, the directors. They're all on a metal boom. And this is a total 1.5 lambda. So this is a construction of a six element, one driven element, one reflector, four directors. This gave a maximum directivity of 12 dBi. So the directivity was 12 dBi and the bandwidth 
of 10% of half power. So yeah, Professor Yagi also received a grant for antenna research. So he presented uh, around nine papers. So later it is called as Yagi Uda Ari. So this was a six element we have seen. Antenna is a 10 dBA. The disadvantage is uh, it's a narrow bandwidth, but the bandwidth you can increase it uh, by lengthening the reflector or shortening the directors. But this will again reduce the gain. So this is all the example. Uh, this is a 1.5 lambda array. Find out what is a HPBW. This is done experimentally from the a gain pattern, you don't have an equation for this. So it is 44 degrees and uh, HPW in a plane perpendicular to the elements. In the plane of elements, that's an E plane, it is 44 degrees. And in the H plane, which is perpendicular to this, it is 64 degrees. The axial ratio is infinite because it's a, a pure linear polarization. And if it goes to one, it is circular polarization. The gain also has been found out by pattern indication, integration, and the pattern is shown in figure. This is a short example wherein uh, they have taken, uh, this is your driven element, this is your reflector, and these are the four directors. For this, you have a pattern. Com in computer, they have integrated this, and the gain is something like 9.4 dpi, and they measured this half power beam widths. It is 44 and 64 in a plane particular direction. So this is an example of, uh, next is uh, parabolic uh, uh, reflectors or parabolic antennas. So an example is the last portion of this. And uh, this is an example of a large parabolic uh, satellite communication antenna. This is the biggest facility. This is in Germany. Okay, this is a parabolic antenna. This is an example of parabolic antenna. So it's an antenna that uses a parabolic uh, reflector to direct the radio waves generally in the form of a dish, and it is also known as dish antenna or parabolic dish. What's the main advantage of parabolic antenna? It has high directivity. It's similar to a flashlight uh, to direct the radio waves in a narrow beam, and it's only one particular direction. They have the highest gain, that means the narrowest by beam widths. And to achieve this narrow beam widths, uh, uh, the size of the reflector should be much larger than the lambda of the radio waves used. So uh, these parabolic antennas are used in the high frequency part of the radio spectrum. Uh, as UHF and the microwave, microwave HF. So you know that frequency nu is inversely related to lambda. Okay. Uh, so nu is uh, uh, equal to C by lambda. So if, if the frequency is increased, if the frequency is increased, the lambda decreases and the antenna size Okay, the parabolic region should be much larger. So the D here can be greater greater than lambda. The D can be greater than lambda is once again give it in centimeters or so. Uh, the antenna size should be greater greater than lambda. All this time, when we, though it is uh, uh, a loop antenna, whatever, we were talking about uh, D lesser lesser than lambda, small loops, etc. Here we're talking about uh, D greater greater than lambda. If D is supposed to be greater, greater than lambda, you increase the frequency. So where are these used? Uh, these are used for point-to-point -point communications, such as a microwave relay links uh, for carrying television and telephone the signals, wireless LAN -man links, and spacecraft communication. They're also used in radio telescopes. They're also used in radar antennas to locate uh, objects like ships air plants, uh, graded missiles, etc. So this is, uh, these are the uses of parabolic antennas. And let us look at the uh, parabola, a general properties. So when I have a parabola, okay, there are, uh, let us look at these three figures, uh, this is A, B, C. So let us take uh, one at a time. Let us take A here. Uh, so when I take A here, uh, so this is a sheet reflector, and there's a focal point. From the focal point, uh, a, a radiation uh, travels a distance L. It is being reflected by the sheet reflector, and it travels back to F. So let us say this is path two. 
and this path two it has uh, traveled a distance so path two has traveled a distance to uh, l from f it goes and hits the reflector and it comes back so the distance traveled in this uh, uh, path two is to l similarly uh, in, from f it can again go back to uh, any point here in the reflector and come back here so this is path one so this is your path one the distance that is traveled in path two and the distance that is traveled in path one and two are the same so this is a wave front so referring to this figure distance from the source to the plane wave front so this is the source to the plane wave front uh, via this is your source it goes to hit the reflector and again comes back to the plane wave front so this is your plane wave front okay it should be equal so path 2 is 2n and the path 1 is r into 1 plus cos theta how do you get r equal to 1 plus cos theta how do you get uh, r equal to uh, this path 1 equal to r plus p1 let me say uh, this is the distance it is traveling it's a radial distance r so this is r term so you can see that uh, this is a radial distance r okay that's a r term plus p1 this is your p1 so this is your p1 p1 so what is p1 so if this is theta if this is theta and this is a right angle triangle this is a right angle triangle this is also theta this is also theta so what is this distance uh, adjacent angle this is cos theta and divided by r so path 1 l equal to cos theta into r take out r outside so you get r into 1 plus cos theta so what is r now uh, substitute r equal to 2l divided by 1 plus cos theta so this is a surface uh, uh, contour uh, equation and when we look at this equation it is similar to the equation of a parabola with focus at f so what about the uh, parabola antenna so you have a source then you have a reflector here you have a reflector and from this and you are generating a plane wave front because of the sheet reflector you have generating a plane wave front and uh, what is the uh, mathematics behind it so this is a point source the point source is located at the focal point it is producing a plane wave front so this is producing a plane wave front over a large aperture so this is what is the age so this is your aperture okay this is your complete aperture this is your uh, aperture so this is your large aperture and how are you producing a plane wave front uh, over this large aperture your it's not a horn antenna horn antenna also you have uh, the horn over a distance l a flare angle etc here we are using a sheet reflector using a sheet reflector you are uh, producing a plane wave front over a large aperture and uh, so this is due to the uh, parabolic uh, contour uh, we get this apart from this you have the other uh, uh, dimensions also here uh, oh, we have this is the second portion and the second portion uh, this is the focal point and uh, uh, this is the uh, parabola this is a parabola and uh, the distance uh, here we can see that the distance from any point p assume that this is in any point p on the parabolic uh, curve to a fixed point f is focus is equal to the perpendicular distance of a fixed line called a directrix so back side of the the thing you have what is known as a, a directrix and uh, this distance is seen so we get uh, pf equal to pq so this is pf equal to uh, pq and this is another type of uh, uh, here we have a focus and a directrix so in this parabola once again we have a focus and along with focus we have a directrix directrix so it's a fixed line as a imaginary line with, uh, at the back side of the uh, parabola and uh, this is a, a one i think all this uh, so this is figure b and in figure c uh, we have uh, the aperture plane so this is your aperture plane 
between B and B dash. Okay, and this is your focal point. This is your directrix. And you have uh, A dash is a, a plane, aperture plane. From here, you get a normal, I mean, uh, a plane wave front. And here in this case also, uh, the plane wave front is measured at A dash. It's a line normal to this at an arbitrary distance. It can be at any distance from QS. Here also you have the formula uh, of that of a uh, parabola, uh, taking into consideration that F and the directrix and A dash, which is a line normal uh, uh, to the uh, QS at a, uh, any arbitrary distance. Since it's a plane waveform, the A dash can be moved. But still, it will remain the same. It will remain the same. So we have seen the three uh, cases. So what's the property of a uh, parabolic reflectors? All the waves from the isotopic source, that is at the focus, uh, they arrive at uh, they arrive at the line A A dash with equal phase. So the directrix is the image of the focus, as I said, it's an imaginary line, and the reflected field along the line A A dash appears as though it is originated at the directrix as a plane wave. And the plane BB dash is known as the aperture uh, plane at which the reflector is cut off and uh, this starts the plane wave. It looks as if the plane wave at A dash, it looks as if it is, up, uh, it is originating from the directrix and it is traveling in this direction. It's traveling in this uh, direction. So this is a property of a uh, parabolic uh, uh, reflector. And uh, there are two uh, um, types of uh, uh, parabolic reflector. So one is uh, uh, cylindrical parabolic reflector and the other is paraboloid. So let us take the example of a cylindrical uh, parabola. So this is a cylindrical parabola. So the line source here, uh, uh, as the name is, so not a point source, it's a line source. In the previous example, we were talking about a point source at the focal focus. Here we are talking about a line source and instead of the reflector, we are talking about a cylindrical uh, reflector, this is a cylindrical parabola. And this a portion is your aperture, okay? So what does a cylindrical parabola do? It will convert a cylindrical wave radiated by an in-phase line source. This is your influence at the focus into a plane wave at the aperture. So that's about uh, a cylindrical parabola where you have a line source instead of a point source at a focus. We have a, a line source and that will, uh, the cylindrical uh, parabola, the reflector, uh, the cylindrical parabola, it will convert uh, the cylindrical wave into a focus, into a plane wave at the aperture. The next is paraboloid. In the paraboloid, we have opposite. We have the point source. Instead of a line source, we have a point source. And behind it, we have a paraboloid reflector. So because of this point source, we have a spherical wave, okay, from the isotropic pole. And that spherical wave is converted into a uniform plane at the aperture. So this is your aperture. So from the point source in all direction, it will be there. That will be converted into uniform plane wave at the aperture. So when we consider a single wave or wave lock, this has the paraboloid, uh, what does it do? It will direct or collimate the radiation from the focus into a beam parallel to the axis so that we get the plane wave. We get the plane wave at the aperture. So this is paraboloid reflector. This is one example that was given in July, August 2001. Here, what is asked, uh, the diameter is 6 meters, the aperture efficiency is 0.65, and the frequency operation is 10 gigahertz. So what is lambda? Lambda is C by F. You get lambda as 3 into 10 power minus 2. The area is pi d squared by 4. So that is uh, d is uh, 6 meters. Uh, so you get it as 9 pi. And what is the d in terms of lambda? D in terms of lambda, 6 meters divided by lambda. Lambda is 3 into 10 power minus 2, 200. 
So what is the directive DD? And the directive D is 4 pi into area by lambda square, or you can say 4 pi into D lambda. Uh, so this uh, uh, 4 pi into this is 39.47 into this. And similarly, you can find out the, uh, the beam width between the first null points. This is given by in the table, 140 by D lambda. So you get something like 0 0.7. HP PW is 58 by D lambda. And you can see that this is all very less, less than one degree. It's highly directive. So how much is the directivity? Around 10 power four. The, this is one advantage of the parapola, high directivity and high half power beam widths. Previously, the beam widths were 11 degrees, nine degrees. And here you can see that the beam width is less than one degree. And the effective area, how do you calculate the effective area? The effective area is aperture efficiency into area. They have given the aperture efficiency is 0 0.65. Okay, 0 0.65, and we have calculated the area as pi d squared by four. So compute this by pi d squared by four. That's your effective area. So this finishes uh, uh, the parabola. Uh, so these are the parabola equations available in the net. And you can see that uh, they're all, uh, what do you mean by direct x, et cetera. So next class, uh, we'll be talking about helical antenna. Uh, that will finish uh, portions of module five. Okay, thank you.